Sean in New Paris, Indiana. It says here, Sean, that you disagree with me, so uh, you get put at the front of the line. What's up? Hey, hey, how are you doing, Tom? I'm well. How are you, Sean? Oh, Mr. Hart, excuse me. Tom, 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 that's fine. Okay. Um, my question is, why should the government be responsible for anybody else's, anybody's student loan? Okay. I squeezed a four. I squeezed a four-year degree into about twenty years because I did it as I could afford it myself. Mm -hmm. Why should the government take my money that I've worked for and pay for somebody else? Why, well, let me let me ask you, Sean. Why should the government pay for elementary for for elementary school, junior high school, and high school? I don't believe the federal government should be doing that. It's not constitutional. Oh, uh, so that's your argument then, is that uh, this is, uh, you know, you, you realize <laughs> that... You no, know, my, my argument is... It's entirely constitutional. Decides, no, my argument is somebody decides to purchase something, an education that they cannot afford. Right. And then they want to put me and other taxpayers on the hook for it. Okay, let me answer I your question, Sean. Why should the government be using our tax dollars to pay for people's education? And the answer is really simple. It's the same reason that we pay through K for twelve K through twelve education. We pay for K through twelve education because it's a good investment. For every dollar we invest in schools, we get back somewhere between five and fifteen dollars in tax revenue throughout the lifetime of that person as a consequence of their having been educated we know from the, the experience of the gi bill and this was back far enough this was the 1940s and 1950s the gi bill expired i think in 1964 we know from the experience with the GI Bill that fully paying for 100%, along with a $200 a month stipend to to uh, people, you know, the young men who came back from World War II, that for every dollar we invested in their education, we made seven dollars in additional tax revenue through the through their lifetimes. So one of the very best infrastructure investments that govern, government can make. It's the same reason why we have roads. We have roads to facilitate commerce. We have, we have education to facilitate no. commerce as well. No. We have it is our intellectual infrastructure, Sean. And that's why it's wise for us to invest in it. And it's profitable for a government to invest in it. Now, if you want to ignore the Tenth Amendment, about the states having the um, authority over that and the federal government that does it. Well, if you want to ignore Article 1, if you want to ignore Article 1, Section 8, uh, Paragraph 1, that the whole purpose of the Constitution and the, and the enumerated powers that Congress has is, is to provide for the general welfare and the, and the good of the nation, then you can say, no, it shouldn't be. But the fact of the matter is your constitutional argument is bogus, Sean. If your argument is that if your argument is that you don't want to pay for somebody else's kid, I'd say you already are. It's our public school system. I get it. You don't think we should have a public school system. It should be Hunger Games, no, Koch didn't. Brothers all the way. I get that. No, no, no. That's so people should beg rich people for money to go to school? No. I didn't beg rich people for money. I paid for myself. No, you didn't. I, I, did, you go to, did you go to elementary school? Did you pay for your elementary school? No, my parents did. Okay, if you hadn't if you hadn't gone to elementary school, which would you have been able to go to college? A, which was at a local level at the time. The Department of Education. And that's that's one of the big problems we have, Sean, is that right now if you live in a crappy neighborhood, you've got a crappy school. Nobody in the wealthy white suburbs in America is talking about a crisis in public education in the United States right now. Nobody. The wealthy white suburbs have great high schools, great elementary schools. This is one of the problems. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. Very simply and very clearly, one of the problems that we have is that we're funding basic education with property taxes, which is crazy. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.